Okay, so I'm a few days into this challenge now. I'm on the third day. Uh, as you can see, my body's taking a bit of a beating. Uh, largely down to a lot of scratches I have on my body now. Uh, as I don't have a machete or a knife, I can't cut through the jungle or the trees or the branches. So you, got, you kind of have to use your body on the line uh, as a way to get through them and just push your way through them. You can see I'm a bit dirty. A few cuts all over me. But for the most part, not as bad as I kind of expected. The mozzies have been a pain in the morning and at night. Uh, but with a fire, it does help keep them away. Well, to understand what I'm going through, you kind of have to walk a mile in my shoes. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not wearing any shoes, so kind of go figure. Now, as uh, I'm on here for a few days, I don't want to be burning all my energy up making an intensely kind of long-term survival shelter, as it's not worth the calories or the energy kind of being used to make it. It's best to keep things as simple as you can. I made my shelter up on higher ground. Uh, advantage of this means I've got a better view of the whole area, so I can kind of see what's where. I'm also a bit f further away from the lake. That's quite important. Or the well, I'm a kind of a good hundred meters away from the lake. This means I'm close enough to get water, but I'm also far enough to stay away from the mosquitoes and anything at night, which may come out. There's not really a lot of creatures out in this jungle. Uh, it is coming to the end of, of the uh, dry season, which means that a lot of the creatures won't be around. I have seen a kind of a monitor-sized lizard. Uh, on my second day here but other than that I haven't seen anything the hunger hasn't been too bad out here uh, the dehydration is really bad in the first few days but I've kind of got that on a kind of on a key on a good level at the moment uh, one of the hardest things out here is the endurance and the time because I've got to make my time and then I'm done uh, you know I know I can survive out here but it's all about making the time make sure I've got enough energy for my two day trip out of the jungle because it's going to take me two days to do it in. So I need to make sure I'm well hydrated and make sure I've got enough energy in my body to do that. That's my main focus. I'm not going to burn my calories kind of chasing so much food because it's pointless. Because if I'm going to be out in a certain amount of days, it's not worth the bother because you're going to burn more calories trying to get it than you are going to get from whatever creature you're going to eat. I found myself, it was this whole time, kind of pissing a yellow colour of urine. Uh, so that's definitely a good sign that I'm dehydrated but the water is a bit sickly out here so I'm kind of concerned to drink too much but you kind of have to drink it anyway uh, the best way of surviving is to be like a scavenger essentially you know I found a bottle being able to use that to kind of boil water in but it's not really a feasible attempt because if I do that again and again I'm going to burn so many calories doing that I'm going to be next to the fire all the time it's going to be heating my body up and making me sweat more so really I'm barely even gaining liquid for the amount of liquid I'm losing. Like the first day out here was probably one of the hardest days because like I was very much out of my comfort zone but if you're not outside your comfort zone you're not going to grow as a person. Uh, because I do a lot of my research of where to go on Google Maps you never really see what is on the ground so there's not really been much in terms of fruit in the trees. I think I found very few pieces of fruit which has been really bad. Uh, I did start looking a lot and keeping my eyes open and looking up all the time. This is, is just not an area where there's a lot of fruit. Uh, you know, TV shows have the opportunity to send out location scouts and producers to the area first in order to see what's out there, but I've kind of got to go in there blind and see what's there. Uh, so it's always a bit more tougher for me than in any kind of TV show. It's hard to make all the right choices when you're out here, especially on the first day, because you're kind of in a situation where you've never been in before. So you kind of have to accept that you don't always make perfect choices every time. You know, like essentially every injury out here is magnified massively. Uh, this is a lot of the time because, you know, you get hurt out here, then you've got no way to kind of fix it. You're not e eating enough calories. So I find any kind of a injury out here is magnified massively because you're not eating enough calories, not getting enough vitamins or nutrients. Your body doesn't heal itself. So simple cuts like these would be healing a bit faster than normal, but at the moment, it's taken a while and it won't probably heal till I'm out of the jungle because I'm out eating proper meals again.
time to get where you want to be is not always easy. You can't always just map it out and get there step by step. Uh, it's not really an easy process. It takes a lot of hard work and determination out here uh, just to be where I am right now. You know, like any kind of success you're going to do is going to come in leaps and bounds. A lot of times they're just small, small steps. Uh, so I was able to find water. I was able to find a bottle. I was able to, you know, make a shelter. I was able to use the mosquito net. Just give me that little bit of safety out here because I feel very unsafe at night from being completely naked as you feel like anything could come and get you. That thinnest layer is crucial. It makes you feel 10 times as safe. And I could actually get to sleep last night because of that. I do know that if I do find a fruit tree, like there's going to be dangers there because a lot of times snakes may find themselves at the bottom of those fruit trees to get any kind of prey. Same if you find a bird in a tree, snakes might be at the bottom waiting in ambush. You know, in any survival situation, you don't want to be moving too fast. Uh, the more of a hurry you're in, you're going to find yourself burning out. You know, survival is sometimes you've got to be lazy and sometimes you've got to be sitting around for a lot of the, of the day. Because uh, the more energy you burn, you know, the more calories you burn. And essentially, you're going to find yourself getting in through to your fat and your muscle deposits. Uh, I feel like my body's been burning through its muscle deposits at the moment. Not too much fat has gone off my body. But, you know, we'll see. Uh... The unfortunate thing is that, you know, muscle takes quite a long time to gain. But in a survival situation where you haven't got that much food, your body's always going to want to burn the fat first. The main reason for that is that essentially fat is stored energy. But muscle kind of requires energy just to maintain it. So it makes sense on like an in versus out kind of scenario that your body wants to burn the fat. Because the muscle takes energy to maintain. Fat doesn't burn Oh, sorry, kind of worded that incorrectly. So like any kind of a survival scenario when you're not having enough calories, your body's going to want to burn fat. Because fat is just stored energy and takes no energy to maintain. Muscle has energy within it, not as much as fat, and it's harder to burn and less efficient. But the crucial difference is that muscle takes energy just to maintain itself. So you've got a choice of either burning something which takes nothing to maintain, or burn something which takes something to maintain. And if it takes something to maintain, that's a drag on your whole body. Uh, last night in my dreams, I was kind of a, uh, I was kind of hallucinations or kind of dreams, just kind of melded with the real world. Uh, I thought there was someone there helping me at one point, who was kind of taking care of the fire. Obviously there's no one out there. And at one point I woke up and I was just like, can that person help me? And I, then I realized, oh yeah, I'm out here alone. I do find when you're alone by yourself, your mind does dream a lot more than it normally does. Maybe just to kind of, I don't know, keep your mind kind of active because you're not getting that kind of social interaction with anybody. I do find that, you know, from reading kind of about philosophers and such, kind of not doing things is going to cause more regret than doing things. So, you know, it might hurt at the moment, but at least in 20 years' time, maybe I won't feel uh, so bad about it. Uh, there's kind of something similar which I kind of seen in Game of Thrones, one of the best shows of all time. So to do with like, can someone be brave if they are afraid? And then it was retorted in the book that being afraid is the only time a man can be brave. You know, that was like me last night, sleeping naked. I was very scared, but also the fact that I stuck it out means that I'm very brave as well. You know, fear doesn't shut you down. You know, fear doesn't shut you down. It kind of wakes you up because it kind of makes you feel alive. And though I was scared last night, I felt very alive. And I felt like I was doing something which not really many people in the world are doing, especially not at the moment. Nelson Mandela once said, courage is not the absence of fear. Uh, yeah, Nelson Mandela said, courage is not the absence of fear, but it's the triumph over it. You know, it's very hard being out here. It's very hot and very dehydrated. And also, I'm extremely bored as well. Uh, there's not a lot to do. There's nobody to talk to. And that's one of the hardest parts, uh, not being entertained. Because once you kind of got a shelter sorted, a water sorted, and you've got a fire, and you've got food as well, and you're not that hungry, then what's the point? You know, once you've got food, fire, shelter, water, and you're not that hungry, it's like, what is the point of kind of being out here? Kind of drags. I'm just gonna hit my day limit and then I'll be done because, you know, there's not much more to achieve, I find. It's just 
a lot of other stuff now. It's just endurance and persistence. That's all it is. You know, you can't really experience new things unless you're kind of prepared to kind of go further away from home and further from safety. Because safety in your comfort zone, you're not going to find anything new there. And it's going to be very hard to find anything new. You got to go to a new place, a new country, and just see what happens. You know, I wish there was more fish out here. Uh, that would make my stay a lot better. And I wish there was like fruit in the trees so I can get some good carbs in. What I've really had is protein and some carbs, but there's not much fruit out here. Uh, so it's a bit of a drag. But I've kind of shown I can survive out here and that I can survive the nights and I can survive the dehydration. I survived the days, survived the food, get fire started. I proved I can do it. A lot of it is down to toughness. It's not as hard as you think surviving. You've got to be mentally tough. That's what survival is, you know? Survival isn't all about being some kind of action man, climbing trees, burning yourself out. Survival is all the mental game. Can you put up with it? Because we can all do this. We can all do this, but people just don't want to do it because it's it feels too dangerous. It feels too scary. You know, kind of all the survival stuff out here isn't gonna come overnight. All the survival stuff out here is not gonna come overnight to you. It's gonna come in little installments, bit by bit, day by day, you're gonna improve your situation to the point where you're comfortable and you can relax. Once you've got like the four key things sorted, you know, fire, water, shelter, and food, you're sitting pretty. Then all you've got left is just kind of that drive to keep on going. I, I could survive out here for a long, long time if I wanted to. But the case is, I don't really want to because I've got a life back in England to live. And I've got people I want to see. I want to see my girlfriend as well. Uh, the whole time out here is constant success and failure. Failure comes first and then the success comes later with hard work and determination. Uh, I found the first day very hard because, you know, I use Google Maps to find locations to go to. So I don't know what's on the ground. And when I get to the ground, sometimes I'm very disappointed by what I see. But, you know, put some time in, put that effort in and, you know, success is more likely to come. You know, you're not going to succeed if you don't try. It just doesn't happen. You need to at least put a bit of energy into it. You know, the hardest times and hardest tribulations and the hardest trials will often lead to the greatest successes of your life. You know, this is a 24 hour challenge. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like 24 hour every day. This isn't like a nine to five where you kind of, you know, start at nine and, you know, as you can imagine, end at five or six. This is just non-stop. You have to live it and you have to breathe it. You know, you can't just go home at five o'clock every day, kind of go back to like a normal life. You kind of have to continue through. I find myself very much looking forward to the nights out here because the night means I can pass time a lot faster than during the day and the sun's gone away. The nights are quite warm, to be honest, and you don't really need a fire to stay warm. I was actually too hot last night, especially my feet, which are near to the fire. Uh, it was kind of heating my body up and it made me feel very uncomfortable. I had to uh, kind of put the fire out slightly using kind of mud and just piling it on top of there. But you know, the fire's more powerful than the mud and it kind of breaks through. No, well, I kind of used some mud to kind of. Uh, the fire last night was kind of even too warm, you know, the nights are already warm enough as it is. Uh, but if I had too much warmth, like my feet are near to the fire, and because of that, my feet got too warm and I started to get a bit hot and sweaty and it's very uncomfortable. It's like a burning sensation. So I had to get out of my shelter and kind of use mud to pull it onto the fire just to dampen it down. But ultimately the fire is so strong, it's gonna kind of burn through that mud because it's gonna use the wood to burn and it's stronger than you know, any kind of mud which you can put on it. The mud essentially does uh, cut the amount of oxygen the fire can get. So it just kind of put it down for a bit, but not forever. But I do look forward to the nights out here. The main thing is that it's not sunny and plus I get to sleep. And if I get to sleep, I get to pass time faster. And you know, every night I do is an, a night closer to me getting home uh, and me seeing the people I want to see. Seeing my friends, seeing my housemates. Uh, so yeah, I look forward to the night because in my eyes, the night comes after the day. I know you can say the day comes after the night, but it just gets me closer to home. And I don't, I, if I can sleep, though it takes a while to get to sleep, and it is hard to get back to sleep once you wake up, the closer I am to getting home, the better, because then I can kind of eat real food and drink real drinks and be clean and be cool and to be showered and to be comfortable. 
and to use the internet and to watch TV and to relax in a nice bed and just all the normal things which is kind of take for granted. And just so I can talk to people. I want to talk to people. If I had people out here, it wouldn't be so hard. But because there's no one out here with me, the boredom really sets in. Like, it's nobody. Like, in my last challenge in Malaysia, I had James with me. This meant that I wasn't... Things did get boring at times, but it wasn't, like, this boring. Like, there's nothing to do at all. There's no nightclubs around here. There's no libraries. There's no Wi-Fi connections in the jungle. It's got nothing. Why do you ever want to live here? What am I doing here? Like, why would I want to be here? I've been very careful with water. I did originally boil it to drink it. Uh, but t uh, yesterday, I made a decision to actually... Uh, I've been very safe with water. Uh, I wanted to kind of boil it because I'm scared of getting any kind of parasites or pathogens or bacteria inside me. Because if I get hurt out here and I feel sick, I can't really get out. And there's no way for me to get out. And plus, it will dehydrate me further. It's going to kind of screw me over. Uh, but I did yesterday make the decision to start drinking out of that water. It's not the worst water in the world, it's not the best, but it's going to have to do because it's not realistically viable to keep boiling water in a plastic bottle because the amount of heat you lose from doing that, keeping the fire going quite strong, and just being getting more dehydrated because the fire dehydrates you by sitting next to it. That's it. find yourself willing enough to go in one certain direction you will eventually make your way down that direction if you don't give up you will make ground that's one of my key kind of feelings and kind of my key motivating thoughts because I know if I keep trying I will get there eventually you know a lot of our weaknesses out here in the modern world it's just that we give up too easy you know I find that as well uh, if it doesn't work out, you kind of give up. But being out here in a survival situation, you don't have the choice of giving up. You have to continue. You can't stop at all. Newt Gingrich once said that perseverance is the thing that comes after you're tired of doing all the hard work. On some level, I do kind of feel, on some level, I do kind of feel like I'm almost kind of giving back to the wild because I'm here to kind of feed. The mosquitoes and the ants and such and the flies which are kind of biting me uh, quite a bit you know this is like uh, another attempt today to get more fish let's hope something comes up
Where's he go? Ah. Oh. As you can see, like half the body is stuck in here. I kind of mullered it a bit, grabbing it out. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Got dinner for tonight. Woo! Yeah! No, I am going to wash out my net. I do have to, oh, I'm going to eat that. That's worth eating. That's all bone. That's all bone. I'm going to wash out my net. Because I don't want the smell of fish. Because I, because I don't. Because I don't have a knife, I have to use a stick and just like stab it with a stick uh, right behind the head, or well, right behind the skull. Because the skull is uh, very tough, but right behind it is a bit more soft. I'm just gonna wash out my thing. Just put it inside out, I just, I'll just give it. I've also just found a little tiny fish as well here. It's not worth cooking this one because it's so small. So, let's make sure. So I just found a little tiny fish inside the net, which is a double win. It's a tiny one, not gonna give me many calories, but it's all worth the little protein I get. It's not really worth cooking it because it's so small. Bon appetit. Today's a good day. I keep on turning my camera on and off again, because guess what? Another little fish. And I saw another one a second ago. And another little fish. Today is a good day. What can I say? Today is a good day for fishing. Got more fish. Here and here. Check for any final fish. Oh, and another one. I see a tiny lizard. I can see a tiny lizard, but I'm not going to be able to get it. It's too fast and it's within the trees. You can kind of see that. Like, it's not worth me trying to get. I know my limits, and you can't outspeed a lizard when it's stuck within the bushes. Oh my god, it's felt so hot being out in that sun for those two seconds.
You know, as you can tell, going downhill will lead you to water more likely than not. You know, I am generally uphill and then downhill, there's the water through there. The fire kept burning very well last night. I used a lot of dead hanging trees, which is a lot drier than any living trees or trees on the floor because trees on the floor of the jungle will stay wet and moist longer, which is bad for a fire. It's going to be dry. Okay, so I'm gonna have to cook my fish very quickly as I can just I'm gonna have to cook my fish very quickly because as you can hear it's been thundering which means it's gonna start pouring down in a second. I put it inside this pot of a container, uh, some kind of shell of some sort. I put it inside this pot of a container, some kind of shell of some sort uh, from a tree, like from a nut of some kind of a fruit. I'm going to put it inside the ember and ashes and that's going to cook it. <sighs> now it's just a waiting game. leave and do some filming. Okay, so 
as of yesterday, I've been drinking water from this little lagoon. Uh, obviously, if you go too far without drinking water, you are going to die of dehydration. It is an absolute killer. Now, uh, having this just yesterday, the key to do this is essentially to drink from where the sunlight's been hitting it. Because UV kills bacteria. Now, I'm just going to have a drink right now. I'll take my camera gear off first, as it's not waterproof. I'm just going to go out to where the sun's been the most and drink. Ah, yeah, it doesn't taste too bad. Just going to do a few different camera angles. As you can tell, as you can tell, it's going to start thundering down any moment now. So I'm going to get back to my fish and go from there. Okay, it's now cooked. I'm gonna bring it out very slowly. Ah, the smoke is absolutely in my eyes. Let's get out the smoke. Here we go. So maybe it's a bit overdone, but food's food. And like the fish I had the other day, survival isn't meant to taste great. It tastes like barbecue. It doesn't taste too bad. It's going about to start fun. Th well, it's about to start thundering down, so I'm gonna have to go. Uh, get my camera gib all put away. This place may be a very hard place to live in. And I'm, um, you know, surviving out here. This place may be a very hard place to live in, and I'm surviving out here. But at sunset, when the temperature's gone down, look how beautiful this lagoon is. That no matter how hard it is out here, this has to be one of the most beautiful locations being experienced at this moment in time, and I absolutely love it. I like to come out here in the evening just to bathe. I enjoy being in the water, it helps you cool down, and the sun's gone, so it won't dehydrate me. Thank you. 
very expensive camera. Lots of love the mud. Again, say. It's so smooth, you can just kind of glide over it. And it's like full, so I'm going to take it out now. But you kind of get the point. It's absolutely majestic out here. You know, I've overcome water, shelter, fire, and food. But one thing I need to overcome now it's time. I've got a few more days left. And I've overcome most things in nature, but time is the one thing I must overcome now. I've got to find a way to keep myself entertained. I want to say entertained, but I find a way to keep myself from not getting too bored and just passing the time. Because there's not really anything out here that's fun to do. at night and I'm away from my camp uh, I need to get there ASAP I'm gonna use this night vision in order to help me get through so I'm gonna flip the camera the other way around I could just go there moving very carefully I am fully aware that the night time is the most dangerous time in the jungle because you can't see what's going on it's the time when the snakes and all the predators will come out I just heard something there. Drinking the water. Yeah, I want to go via the water. This, this is the route which I know. Very deliberately. I'm moving very, very slowly as I can't see where my feet are, and I don't know whether I'm going to slip down or there might be a creature on the floor. Who knows? Oh, uh, that is deep. That is deep. I'm in the water at the moment. I can hear. Go. So I'm out the, the water for now. Back in the water. Whoa! That was close. Heard something there. I 
that's a, a bird of some sort. may notice root in the light but in the dark even with this night vision camera it's near enough impossible just don't know where I'm stepping just can't see anything like you don't get enough detail from night vision. I'm running out of battery. I'm running out of battery. Oh, something went by me. I'm running out of battery at the moment, so I need to be quick. Okay, I think if I turn to the right, okay, I'm starting to know where I am. If I go, I think, up here. Okay, I can see my shelter. Well, my mosquito net. Had something there. See my camera gear inside there charging. Let's get inside. inside that was one hell of a scary walk in the dark naked away from your camp that's not a thing
I'm trying to make a fire at the moment. Uh, I can't sleep without the fire because I'm very scared out here of any predators, of any snakes that could attack me in the middle of the night. Uh, this is very scary. Uh, this is should not have done this. Just trying to make sure I'm trying to make sure all the kindling has enough air and oxygen for it. I can hear branches being broken and twigs being broken on the jungle floor. The only thing that can ever break branches are creatures, so they never break by themselves. So I need this fire to be working. Now for some bigger branches. I'm covered in ants. I've got loads of ants on me at the moment. Okay, so uh, this fire should be good. Should okay, so this fire should be good enough. Uh, it makes you feel 20 times as safe uh, away from any kind of snakes or any kind of predators out here or any kind of monitor lizards. Because obviously a snake or any kind of animal can attack me through that mosquito net, but this fire just makes you feel a bit more safe. It's just kind of that. You know, maybe it's just more uh, mental than it is actually physically making me safer. But yeah, this makes you feel like I can actually fall to sleep. I'm gonna go back inside my shelter. Hi, it's Daniel. It's been raining all through the night. Uh, I'm currently inside a bin bag that I was using to keep my things dry inside my backpacks. Oh my God. It's been non-stop thunder, non-stop pouring down. There's no fire. 
and I'm freezing cold. Without these bin bags, <coughs> I would definitely have hyper hypothermia. It is <coughs> brutally cold, and I've been shaking for most of the night. These bin bags are the one thing keeping me alive at the moment. Without these, without these bin bags, I might be dead. I don't know. Oh, I think I honestly think I would be dead without these bin bags. I'd be, I'd be, I'd have hypothermia, and I would have died. These. While I'm still cold, it does trap some of the body heat and it does keep some water off me. Like I am so wet, but I'm not as wet as I would have been. Oh, it's starting to get a bit more light outside. I'm hoping the rain will stop at some point and then I can make a plan. But until then, I can't. Oh. My GoPro's not got a lot of battery left, so oh, it's bye for now. This is absolute hell, absolute hell.